Bloom's taxonomy is perhaps one of the most widely used taxonomies in curriculum and instructional design. Uh, Benjamin Bloom originally developed his uh, taxonomy back in the 50s and it was uh, then revised uh, by some of his colleagues um, uh, in the early 2000s. And it, it is a central tool that, that uh, we use in, in curriculum design and in education. And it really deals with the notion of thinking skills on a scale of lower order to higher order thinking skills. And uh, you've got a couple of resources that we are pointing you to in terms of the uh, verbs that you use and, and there's a Bloom's taxonomy summary. And I, I want to give you a, another perspective on those resources and help you understand and, and help provide a context for how Bloom's taxonomy can be very, very useful in helping you design your learning objectives and goals and, and your learning or your learning outcomes if you're doing outcomes based instruction. And it, it's a really important to understand that even though we focus primarily on the cognitive cognitive domain, Bloom really focused on all three domains working together. Cognitive, the thinking skills, the effective domain, emotions, feelings, the psychomotor domain, procedural, physical, those types of components. So um, Bloom saw all three components working together. And in order to de develop e effective instructional design, you had to address those effective values and attitudes, the psychomotor skills and the cognitive knowledge. So it, he really saw it as a balance. We often focus primarily on this cognitive domain um, in terms of the creation, the synthesis analysis and application comprehension and knowledge. So, you know, we've reduced it um, significantly, but um, I would encourage you to take a look at the additional resources that we have and look at the broader perspective and combine the cognitive effect of psychomotor. But on, on a practi practical note, when you're developing your um, goals and objectives and your or your learning outcomes, you're going to be using language and terminology uh, when you write these uh, goals, objectives, and outcomes. And the verbs that you use for that terminology come from Bloom's taxonomy. And it's, it's helpful to understand um, the difference between the lower order thinking skills and the higher order thinking skills. Uh, from just remembering something, identifying something, recalling, uh, you know, understanding something by interpreting, classifying, summarizing, inferring, um, applying where you actually carry out or implement. You know, the, these fall under the sort of lower order thinking skills, and they often are aligned with uh, competency-based education, where you know you're testing the vocabulary, you're testing the identification of something, you're testing whether or not a, a student can map something or contrast it, or they can construct a model, or they can carry out a procedure or they can implement um, uh, some instructions. You know, th these uh, categories often fall into competency-based education. And, and we'll develop this further in the competency-based versus uh, outcomes-based education section where you will be identifying what type of instruction you're going to be designing. The higher order thinking skills um, deal with um, analysis, evaluation, and creation where um, you're moving beyond just identifying or organizing things to actually making some decisions that uh, require an analysis, outlining, integrating, coordinating, you know, testing, judging. As soon as you start moving into the critiquing or judging, um, you're, you're moving into the higher order thinking skills. And then when you're creating something, planning, design, uh, hypothesizing, you know, you're in that creation synthesis stage where um, you know this is sort of the realm of outcomes based learning so it's it's really important to understand you know this um, sort of continuum of learning that Bloom's taxonomy uh, focuses on um, <clears throat> we like to use sort of the inverted Bloom's taxonomy uh, because the higher order thinking skills really deal with the notion what we refer to as synthesis where you've got creation evaluation uh, analysis right so you're creating you're analyzing your you're evaluating, you're doing those things. In the lower order thinking skills, it starts out with just 
remembering things, listing a name, identifying, right? Vocabulary. I'm going to use that exam. So standardized testing, quizzes. Quite often, your your testing deals with just this mem remembering, or it might actually move up a, a, a level to interpretation, summarizing, explaining, inferring, paraphrasing, discussing. These are still lower order thinking skills. When you start to apply something a little bit, you know, use a diagram, make a chart, solve a problem, calculate. You're still working within a procedural perspective and an application, but there's really nothing new that is coming out of it. You're working with an existing structure, so I think it's really important to remember those things. So again, when you're making your decision about outcomes-based versus competency-based, where you're landing on Bloom's Taxonomy will also help you with those decisions. Or when you make that decision, then you know the realm that you can work on, and you can actually choose your verbs and choose uh, the language you're using for your outcomes uh, more effectively. So we've got a couple of documents within the, the um, uh, course that you, you want to take a look at in terms of selecting verbs and we've got a, a little summary document on, on the Bloom's taxonomy. But this really should help give you a better understanding. I'm going to identify just a couple more things I want to emphasize. You know, the, the knowing um, remembering, understanding really deals with that, that identification, labeling, vocabulary, those types of things. Um, when you start to apply, you're still in the lower order thinking skills, but you're you're solving or you're calculating, you're making a chart, you're using a diagram, you know, you're applying rules, you're applying principles. So you're you're getting closer to the higher order thinking skills, um, but it's really an application of procedures, right? When you move higher still, this is where you start to move beyond the application and you have to actually make some new decisions. You take a look at the cause and effect relationships and you make it you make an inference um, you know in terms of uh, comparing contrasting right if there's a judgment if there's an evaluation involved if there's an aspect of criticism involved you know that evaluation component requires you to make an inference now uh, what we are doing within 3210 is we are asking you to build and design and construct and plan. So we're, we're at the higher end of the uh, Bloom's taxonomy because we're asking you to create something. So again, outcomes-based education focuses on you know this level of um, instruction. And, um, and, and this isn't necessarily better. We call it higher order thinking skills because it requires a different level, but there's nothing wrong with competency-based education. There's nothing wrong with identifying vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with being able to apply those things. Uh, please don't make that mistake of saying that there's anything wrong with that type of instruction. It has its place, it has its role. And in, in introductory courses, you'll find that quite often you're dealing at that informational level. In more advanced courses, you move up uh, on Bloom's taxonomy. One, one last thing I want to encourage everybody to remember, don't forget about the effective and uh, the psychomotor domains when you're uh, building your instructional plan when you're working through your DACOM, when you're working through your um, outcome map. Um, you want to look at the whole individual and that effective and psychomotor uh, domains really come into play. So don't just rely on the cognitive domain. Yes, it's important. We use it a lot. <clears throat> but let's look at the whole individual uh, when we create that learning environment and we address that learner's needs.